Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Cold Film Review. I am your host, Cody Everett. This week we find out that none of us were popular in high school. <laughs> so let's just start the show. <laughs> your Hollywood system stole our sex and co-opted our violence, so there's nothing left for our kinds of movies. <laughs> I did not hit her. It's not true. Clopex. 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 Up yours, baby. Me and Bubba, my little brother, listen to you every night. Where in the hell are we? I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> All right, so this week we are talking about the 1990 film Pump Up the Volume. This was picked by our special guest, Matt Robertson from Dark of the Matinee. Thanks for being here. Explain explain to people what Dark of the Matinee is and uh, what you do and all that stuff. Yeah, all right. Time for plugs, huh? Okay, uh, so... Um, Jumping in early. <laughs> Dark of the Matinee started uh, four years ago as a podcast, actually, where we did sort of what you guys do. Uh, three friends of mine, um, and we reviewed uh, various cult films and other things. We did more series, did uh, four episodes a month, and each month it was like a series. So we did, you know, all of the Jaws films, and we did killer car movies, which I'm sure you love, uh, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you know, a number of a uh, number of different things. This like sounds that. way better than our podcast. Um, yeah, already a, a better <laughs> formula than what we got. <laughs> Randomly picking films, whatever seems good the day before. So, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing is, is you like you do pick these things, and then you have to like come up with. So like the f- three killer car movies was pretty easy. Finding the fourth one took us watching some real crap mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. Or like killer Christmas films, right? Like evil Christmas films. There's a couple I'm sure you guys can like yeah. say right away. And then there's a couple that are like, you know, harder sits. We just did the so, first four Silent Night, Deadly Night, no, then. That would have maybe been a better way to go. <laughs> Christmas Eve. Oh, no, Santa Sleigh. Black Christmas. <laughs> Black Christmas, though, is amazing. Santa, Santa Claus. Santa Sleigh with Bill Goldberg. <laughs> that one? I think so. Probably I, didn't make yeah. the cut. Yeah. I'm take I, a guess. Was Gingerbread Man. I think it was like a 90s <laughs> horror movie. <laughs> Um, so we did that for a while, and then that uh, sort of eventually that ended, and it morphed into a website that now I just run and, and review for. Uh, and uh, I'm part of the Phoenix Critics Circle, so I review all the new stuff that comes out. So if you guys are interested in what I thought of the movies this uh, weekend. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. What were I the would, movies? Then I would direct you to Dark of the Matinee for hours of reading pleasure. Oh. <laughs> and you can find out. Um, and then that also spun off into doing the Arizona Filmmaker Showcase at Film Bar, which is a monthly event that I do where I uh, basically just show uh, locally made films, give filmmakers in the Valley a chance to showcase their stuff without any cost to them. In fact, we give them a uh, free drink usually and a free ticket for someone that, to come along with. And, and it's free and it's you're able to get your work out there so people can see it. That's the great thing about it. So send your stuff. So are you directly, are you directly like uh, associated with Film Bar? Like, do you work with them, or are you just good friends and basically get this worked out? So uh, Andrea uh, knew of the podcast and the website, and then she eventually approached me if I wanted to to uh, come run this night and essentially see where it went. And I had done one showcase or like one sort of film festival on Grand Avenue years before that so i kind of it was already something i had wanted to do for a long time uh, nice. but just nice. the right people right timing yeah. and now we've been doing it for three years a little over three years which is crazy it's a lot awesome of, do you think like most cities have somebody <laughs> like you in them where they just want to showcase local work and try to like prop up like the the community of artists that are there i hope so i think having la so close and so many people running off there i think adds to why I do what I do and try to keep it here local to Phoenix mm-hmm. and Arizona in general. Because so many people run off. Like everyone I went to SEC film school with is pretty much have tried at least to move to LA or New York yeah. and pursue, pursue something. No one stayed here. But that's where, the, I mean, that's kind of where the work is, right? It's true. It's yeah. true. I think that that is to some degree, but I think that there are reasons like tax incentives and there's a yeah. lot of sunny days, a lot of predictable weather here yeah, in Phoenix. Yeah. There's no reason why more movies aren't shot here. 
Right. Um, yeah, well, but it does take a little bit of a community thing. Yeah, I think, mm-hmm. well, a lot of it has to do with the tax incentives. It does. Yeah, you know. a lot of it has to do with that. It yeah. sucks. Well, it's it funny does. that we're talking about Arizona film because this film is set in Arizona. It is. <laughs> and we've seen a few films actually recently that are set in Arizona. So yeah. we need to bring yeah, it back. You, yeah, popular the, place in the yeah. 80s. Yeah, it I was. Guess so. I guess so. Yeah, it was a, a more popular location. Which definitely has something to do with why I picked this film that it takes place in a fictional town anyway. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Feels like home. All right, so you want to give the synopsis of the film? So Mark, I what? It, correct me. What's his last name? Is it Mark? I anyway, knew Mark, right? Mark, aka uh, uh, Hard Harry. Yep. Uh, is a young uh, uh, high schooler who uh, is kind of an, a social outcast who uh, at night uh, broadcasts a pirate radio station uh, to his local high schoolers who tune in uh, in various spots around uh, Paradise Hills, Arizona. Um, and, uh, he eventually, um, gets some, uh, calls that garner some attention from the school, uh, and that starts to escalate things that threaten, I guess, uh, the, the very, uh, radio program that he provides. And the, and the school itself. Why did you choose this movie? Uh, so, uh, for a long time, Pump Up the Volume was a film that I thought I was pretty much in a complete minority of, in, of, of even knowing about, uh. It wasn't uh, a film that many people I went to like high school and stuff knew about, and that's right around where I saw it. Uh, and then more recently, I've met a lot of people uh, that do stuff in the Valley that this is sort of like a, kind of an important film too. So like Kelly uh, Aubrey that owns film and runs a film bar. This is like a, a big film for him. And I think it's... Uh, uh, it also was uh, a film I never got to talk about on my podcast, so I thought, <laughs> and I always wanted to, but we had no way of working this into like the way we did themed months and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, radio I was, DJ theme. I, I could only think of one other one. <laughs> the, radio the, theme. Uh, the Oliver Stone film, uh, uh, Talk Good Radio. Morning. Oh, oh, like, Good morning, oh well, Good morning, okay. Morning, so yeah. th- okay, there might have been enough. I don't think he did that film, so I no, just didn't try did hard that. enough. Is what I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, um, so yeah, I had, I thought that this also, uh, needed to be revisited. I don't think it's like a film that's ever going to get a Blu-ray release or anything like that. Very I'll tell you what, it's, it's, own. it's fucking not <laughs> no. finding this mo- mother is a bitch. <laughs> yeah. We were like, we thought like I, at least I did. I, I don't know. Chris did too. I don't know about you guys, but I literally thought it's Christian Slater, 1990, <laughs> How hard could it be to How find? How hard can this <laughs> yeah. be to find? There's a weird thing with his early movies because we were just on this uh, gleaming the cue is yeah, another one right. where it's like you do that can't one fucking cuffs. find that movie. You can't find cuffs. Are you oh, serious? It's like no. a weird <laughs> cuffs <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, cuffs <laughs> is everywhere. That film that races everywhere, our presence yeah. wherever we go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Too much. I, I managed to snag the last copy from Zia the other day. So okay, which I was happy they even had it. Yeah, but. yeah. Yeah, I, you know what, to your point, though, what, what you were saying about, like, be, feeling like you're in a minority, honestly, like, I think I've only met, like, one other person in my life that has seen this movie, and, you know, so I agree with you. I, I was pretty excited when you did pick it, because I haven't seen it in such a long time. Yeah. It's I a see, great I, film. I've never seen it. This is my first time. Really? Oh, wow. I've never seen see, it yeah. either. That's really? what I thought. I wondered if this would be I'd, somewhere. I'd seen yeah. it one time, but I want to say, like, like, 91 or something. So you're, like, yeah. 40. Yeah. Two, I was 42 three. around that time, yeah. 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 So I didn't really speak to you then. You still work in the do- <laughs> dogs yeah. at the time. I didn't understand what these cockamamie kids were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't figure it out. <laughs> All right, so um, it's kind of weird to, like, to talk, like, uh, I don't know. I, go with your feelings. Yeah, I feel like that's basically what this movie is. It's basically go go with your feelings. But at the same time... You talk hard, right? Yeah. 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 So be it. But at the same time, like, with all, with, with all the rebel... With all the rebel stuff that happens in this movie, like as far as like the kids and the uprising and all this stuff, don't the adults kind of win the end because the principal is just showing them how real fucking life is <laughs> like, yeah. by kicking out the idiots and like, well, this is how real fucking what this is the real world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're like, "No, fuck it, we're gonna fight it." I mean, no. or maybe that's the message. I don't know. To some scheming. extent, to some yeah, extent, but, but but again, like the main theme was the right to education, which she was taking away. Like, 
right? Yeah, it's true. He he does make a stand, obviously, but he gets kind of drug off, drugged off, but or or whatever. I mean, he gets taken away. Yeah. And as assume we assume he's going to spend some time, maybe in the slammer or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, which is probably not good for someone who looks as pretty as <laughs> <Yeah>. Christian <laughs> Slater. But That's not Christian true. Those, eyebrows those, those glasses are dorky as hell. <laughs> That's true. But, but um, such a soft spoken man in the, jail. The movie <laughs> does not pull any punches though with that. End. I mean, like it kind of it sticks to like. Whatever feels maybe at least true to some degree of this film, I think that ending is like uh, backs that up yeah. by not making some happy ending. Where yeah, just no, ride, no, I agree. Right off in that jeep into the sunset, <laughs> that sweet jeep, <laughs> yeah, that's, that that's, mini jeep, that's and get away jeep. with it. Yeah. yeah, like no, there is consequences for your actions. Right. Is basically what it's saying. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like that's. I mean, that yeah, that was basically the whole theme of the movie. There right? was a lot of themes to this movie. I think like. Just in like the stuff that he's pre- you know basically preaching like over you know the airwaves or whatever is like inspiring people like it felt almost kind of political in a sense but the way it people, is the people pe- we people were following him but he also maybe he kind of loved it but he kind of didn't want it once it started getting a little too deep like he didn't realize what he'd gotten himself I think there like it just comes from all angles and he's very I don't know what the word is not prophetic but like the way. The way he talks is almost like he's like clowning on like guidance counselors, but he's almost like a guidance counselor. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, and I also think like that um, there is a theme. There maybe there's multiple themes. Maybe there isn't one overarching one. But the film does open up with uh, what? Like, did you ever get the feeling that uh, everything in America is completely fucked? I mean, that's the opening line of the film. Yeah, which could be as much of a theme to this movie as anything. That yeah. that it is just kind of looking at like a current state of something, which. That part was interesting in terms of seeing it now. <laughs> it's what, how it speaks like 20, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah this like, part twenty six years is this later. Bernie Sanders, mm-hmm. like <laughs> <laughs> just quoting yeah. him, yeah. quoting as Christian Slater said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and pump up the volume. Yeah. My is that, favorite movie. Is that movie. your Bernie Sanders? That sounds <laughs> yeah. more like a the Trump. Best I can that was do. Terrible. <laughs> the best I can do. No, that wasn't was, bad. It wasn't bad. No, it was uh, dead on. Uh, I like this movie because I feel like, and I I still feel like to this day when when I first saw it, I was in high school. I I did feel like this movie had more of a true um honest look at like uh being a teenager going through puberty dealing with all these like feelings of uh, like being alone and like you know being an outcast and shit way better than a movie the movie that we recently did was heathers which i didn't really connect a whole lot with i connect with this movie a lot more i don't know if it's just because this movie presents it in more of a honest fashion or if it or and and heathers was more almost uh, theatrical and and wild yeah, and kind of Heather's crazy. Is, Heather's is a much bigger film. Yeah, yeah this right. one feels yeah. so honest, and that's yeah. the, one of the things that I've always appreciated about this film, and I've always kind of struck a chord with me. The writing it. is so great in this movie. I think that the whole time, like I was like, you know, it like it was just so well thought out. Like all the points that they were trying to make, I felt like were very poetically mm. written. You know what I mean? Like. Like and I think that the the girl, what was her name in the movie, Nora, was kind of like a representation uh, of the poetry of the film, but then connecting with him because he also had it too. You know that that's where they kind of found their common ground without even knowing each other, and then she became they became like drawn to each other eventually. But the writing was just on yeah, point, definitely. Yeah, and it does seem like it's uh, almost trying to be a, a some sort of antithesis to a John Hughes film, which mm-hmm. is like a little more glowing, a little lighter about what high school happens. Like this wants to get to some like real shit. And, yeah. and early on too, it wants to get into some real shit. Are you saying like, it's like kind of like the punk rock version of a John Hughes film in a way, in a way, or just a, just a raw like version of grittier. It. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like a John Hughes film would be like the prep. Sure. And sure. This, it, and if you went to high school with the two films, this does imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this does feel like you're trading in your like psychedelic furs or Simple Mind CD for like a Pixies album or a Descendants <laughs> album or something yeah, right. like that. Like this is definitely <laughs> speaking to a completely different yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, group of people. Well, while we're on the topic of music, real quick, like the use of that Leonard Cohen song. Yeah, um, yeah. Everybody knows. Well, there, well there's two of them. Yeah, there think, is yeah. two of them. In uh, there. If it be your will, yep. I think is or something like that. And then yeah, the other one is everybody knows and like. I, I felt like it meant something to the story, but I was trying. You know, I'd only seen it once, so I was, couldn't quite connect with it. Was that? Was there some significance? I don't, I don't know. Other than I think that there was a. Okay, this is a hugely influential personal on my part, but the fact that there is something like Leonard Cohen, and then a, a rare, super rare Beastie Boys track, and then a Pixies uh, B side, and uh, and then a cover of. Uh, 
of uh, um, Sly and the Family Stone song and all this weird stuff on the soundtrack. But in jumping all these different sort of genres, I think that that was super influential. And I wonder if that just is what it's trying to do is maybe to speak to a lot of different yeah. um, strange music. It's also driving home that idea that you just had, which was um, how it's a grittier version of John Hughes. So like all the music is like, like you said, they're like B sides They're like, mm-hmm. you know, B sides always like, that's like kind of the extra track, whatever. You push that to the side, you know? Yeah. So, like the outcast. A little it's the outcast of the, of the, <laughs> yeah, of the I was single. Gonna, so. I was gonna, well, that's what I was going to say. It's like about, it's about being different. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Which I think this is pretty much what this movie address. Mm-hmm. A lot is like, you know, I don't know if it's like when you're in high school that you feel that you have to be different or that you should be different. There was a point where I just felt like he thought everybody was stupid. Like that's like what you th- who Christian like that, 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 that like that was his opinion of just the society around him as he just was almost like this. He alienated himself because he felt like everybody was lame. Well, I don't know. Go on. Well, he's Sorry. certainly like riling against complacency, like yeah. just sitting there and just accepting whatever you're yeah. given or told or dished out. Like he definitely is trying to like stand up against that. I think that's why he uh, tries to push the sort of content with the the masturbation scene mm-hmm. or the like. The, what's the Descendant song he wants to play? Do you want whale sperm with that? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> um, that whole thing. Like I think some of the music choices, mm-hmm. uh, the the ice. What's the ice tea song? Let's. Get buck naked and fuck I tonight. Know. I yeah. keep the most, of the high most dad specific, in jail. the most specific song. song <laughs> <from the movie. laughs> I mean, it's like other than the place being a little bit mystery of exactly where Ice T wants to like get down. Everything else is pretty spelled out in that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's also where is again is the is the sexual overtones just uh, teenage high like hijinks. What do you what? like? What do you mean? Do you, I don't like, know. Like, I feel like the writing. I almost feel like the. Saying? I almost feel like the writing is no. I almost feel like the writing is like really good to the point to where this is all bullshit. Like high, like it is saying high school and all this shit. Even what he is doing is all bullshit mm-hmm. and means fucking nothing in the big scheme of things. Like, well, I mean, he said specifically in the movie, like his dad, the his dad, still win. his dad, his dad originally got him that thing so he could talk to his friends, but he they weren't powerful enough to reach him, so he just. Every night would just fucking talk, and he had no idea people were tuning in until it finally became apparent, and then that's how this thing all started. So yeah, originally it was just an outlet for him to get his emotions and thoughts and feelings. It's just you know, right. it's put using a diary, but fucking putting it out there for anybody to listen. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, in that regard, yeah, it is what he's doing isn't like, I mean, it is bullshit. It's not like there's an overarching theme the where it's he's trying to make a change. It was just really a way for him to he's, vent he's and a figure character. shit out. I, uh, I, he goes through a, a pretty major arc, a few arcs in a weird way. Yeah. He he um he he. I think he does start this off as just something that he's just like this is an outlet for me. I got to talk to somebody, and this is how I got to do it. And then it then it becomes a serious thing, especially specifically the suicide. He starts realizing that his actions have repercussions, and then. He decides maybe I should shut this down, and then he gets reinvigorated to do it again. Then he starts to shut it down by again. A, by he does a that girl. a few times. Yeah. By a girl. Yeah. Well, well, that, that wasn't until the end, though. Yeah, she but... keeps egging him on well, to, yeah, yeah. to come back. She is the catalyst that kind of gets him back yeah. into to doing it. She's the lady. Macbeth. If there's one thing, I, well, <laughs> I, 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 we that. but she's kind of creepy. I mean, she does like leave him these notes and then mm-hmm. follow him around, and then you thought that was creepy. I was like, why didn't that happen to me in high yeah. school? <laughs> That's true, though. No, that is true because <laughs> it was never a girl that hot. <laughs> That's true. That's why. <laughs> that is true. But the I, thing that she writes him is kind of like. No, I mean, it's, it's the, the, about the guts. I want my guts all over yeah, bit, in front of you. Some, there and... was some eye-rolling teen angsty things <laughs> right. that were going on. Well, she was even that, like, but even that feels pretty honest. Like how, it does. How it does silly feel honest. It does feel feels, honest. Yeah. That was the nicest thing about it, I thought, because even uh, I think me and Mike were talking about this. Like Even the... All the all, all all the stories like the 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 way the guy's describing why he wants to kill himself the the the, the gay kid describing the experience that he had like mm. everything felt like it was actually a real fucking story that they pulled out of like re- reality It wasn't some made up but fucking isn't, thing yeah, to be like isn't it weird it isn't cliche. it weird how those stories also are kind of open ended just like his story is maybe the point. it's open to interpretation like yeah. you you t- you can interpret like what you want it was he gay was he not gay the, the kid that took him up there you can interpret that one way or another to, based on how you view this film same thing with the kid why did he kill himself well you can interpret that like what happened after the, did the school just go back to normal did the did the teachers go back to their jobs or no 
Like these are all like open to interpretation stories within a story, which I thought was cool. I'm not bashing it at all. So stop getting so defensive, Chris. I'm not defensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's basically that the that you would be allowed then as a viewer to watch it to place yourself in whichever maybe yes. character perhaps relates. And the I most think to that's that. why you're connecting to things so much in this movie, which I think is brilliant. Yeah. The high school stuff, the the kids selling copies of the, of the radio show and other things like that, like they're pretty generic. We too. know like, a kid who could, did that. You could fill stuff in. Yeah, I mean, I know, I yeah, I know people that sold like yeah. Uh, uh, tapes of stuff like we know HBO kid that, programs. We know a kid that sold uh, CDs. Skin a Max program. We know, a kid yeah. that, we know a kid that sold CDs of himself in a fake band and he convinced everybody it was real. And <laughs> really? like, it, yeah, it wow. went around right. our school. And like he this. made the money so he could buy equipment for his real band. <laughs> <laughs> that's wow, pretty that's brilliant. That's a real <laughs> thing that happened. <laughs> One thing I feel like they never tied up like that, it, maybe they did and I missed it, but. Um, was in the beginning they make it a point to let the audience know that the dad used to be like a rebel and like that he used to be this different person and now he's Mr. fucking yeah, look at that hair. family man. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Stand up guy, doc guy, is he a doctor? No, he's the commissioner of the uh he's school board. School board. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, that's yeah. right, that's right. Okay. Yeah. I thought they called him doctor at some point. But um but yeah, but I never saw the dad actually like come back out and be like you know what? I, I believe in my son. You know what I mean? Like I identify with him. Uh, it's just like they're so oblivious that he he's in there uh, like I, masturbating they're... loudly. They have no idea what's going no, on. No, I understand that they're making. Uh, what do you mean? The part that his parents were oblivious, or the or are you saying that the father never has a redeeming he never, scenario yeah, where he kind of like both? Actually, sorry, I mixed two ideas together. Okay. I'm saying both. The okay. second one, I I think at, when he's the one that says education is something is a right yeah. to all people. Yeah. I yes. think that's kind of the that whole is. idea of the whole film. And I think he's, he's the one that's kind of going back to like the way he was. Yeah. Lame way. I imagine, I imagine the father being like, maybe not quite as rebellious as Christian Slater, like, or as vocal, but like had his moment, you know, that he was like that. And now he's just gone completely to the other side. Are you like, talking about like, just like that? We we cause, cause the one, one thing I guess I was, I was missing from the film was like, Again, this is going back to it not really having a happy ending, which is why it's probably not in there. But the the simple fact that at the end, when he removes the voice, um, the the thing that's changed in his voice, like the dad is there, he's in the process of firing the principal, and like at no point does it like ever cut to the dad like realizing that it's his son the whole time, and there's no there's no at least moment where he he like recognizes the fact that it's his son mm-hmm. like it, either to be either <laughs> screaming to be up negative, on a jeep <laughs> either to be negative about it or to be supportive yeah i feel it. like a missed opportunity there should have been a connection between the father and the son because it well, seemed like see, they were setting be. it up in the beginning it can't be way. because then it would defeat the, the message of the movie well and also i think that this is supposed to be a little bit of a fantasy in that regards like that this is supposed to take the outsider outcast and like turn him into like a hero or mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. Uh, the popular kid or whatever it may be. That is kind of part of what makes this movie, at least when I initially saw it and even watching it uh, earlier in the week, like what made it appealing to watch the whole thing unfold is watching this guy kind of come into his own and like, you know, stand up for what he believes and, and, and realize what he's doing has like a real purpose and worth. Yeah. So I think like yeah maybe that acknowledgement's not not really needed because it's kind of going for this like glorified self self fulfillment maybe rather yeah than maybe like, that is part my of the parents motion, accept right? me they understand right. like he they, like plus honestly right. like can I say like in regards to the first thing we were saying like oh he's fake masturbating downstairs they don't even like acknowledge yeah. or like honestly like I've I growing up I had quite a few friends who whose parents were just outright oblivious to whatever we were doing we listened he to music was literally one or whatever screaming in yeah. his room at the top of his <laughs> Lungs. I've yeah. had friends whose parents could give a shit. They're like, they just like have learned to just tune out. And I feel like this, that's that's I feel like that's part of them. That's that's kind of part of the message is that I can be as loud and do as much illegal shit as I can. And my parents are just so oblivious to it and mm. don't. Maybe they don't care as much. You know, maybe that's children kind of the nineties. The they seem to care though. They did seem to care. They just well, they cared about them getting laid. Yeah, they, they, yeah. They are yeah, well, yeah, real scene. proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like ready to high five and that like scene was weird. break out the champagne. What a weird that, moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, just take so, it away. No, that yeah, that scene is so weird because it's like they see the girl and then they go on and on about how pretty she is. And then they get real randy about it. Like, yeah. you know what? The idea of my son having sex with this girl. 
how about you and me go upstairs and fuck too? <laughs> like it's so <laughs> weird. So weird. There's a strange beat in this. <laughs> you know, it didn't strike me as odd when I was watching it, but like when you explained it, it did seem a little out of. It's like, a strange thing to want yeah, to want yeah. to wanna, to yeah. wanna have sex with your wife after thinking about your son having sex <laughs> with a random girl downstairs but in the basement. I, I kind of identify with the fact that he. They were so concerned about him being such a loner that they, they even mentioned right. early on, like, go find meet a girl. Did he should, has he met any girls or whatever? Like, they're concerned about that. And then finally, they're like, oh my god, my kid is normal. He's sneaking a girl into his room. Fuck yeah! And then they got excited. Yeah, and yeah, to go and, do it and too. And they also had a huge fear that he was the DJ. And then they're like, oh, mm-hmm. thank God, he's normal. He has a, he snuck a girl yeah, in here. There's no yeah. way that yeah. a girl would like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Like some cool. young rebel who speaks his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes that. Yeah. Out of control. Well, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll uh, pump up the volume some more. Consider the life of a teenager. Huh? You have parents and teachers telling you what to do. You have movies, magazines, and TV telling you what to do, but you know what you have to do. Huh? Your job, your purpose is to get accepted. Get a cute girlfriend to think up something great to do for the rest of your life. What if you're confused and can't imagine a career? What if you're funny looking and you can't get a girlfriend? You see, no one wants to hear it. <sighs> but the terrible secret. And we are back and we're pumping up the volume. Just like you should be in your car right now or wherever you're listening. Just don't do it too loud. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> don't hurt yourself. It's the kind of message you get in yeah. this movie. I'm just, yeah. I'm channeling my inner Christian Slater right now, and I'm channeling things he would say, uh, you know, jerk off nightly. Uh, and uh, I love that actor. Yeah. And fu- fuck Eat uh, your cereal with a yeah. fork. Yeah. Right? Fuck your parents. <laughs> do your homework in the dark. Blow <laughs> shit up in the microwave. Yeah. You know, oh, God. somehow that breaks your nose. <laughs> okay, you know what? Something so, blew out of that. I'm so glad you guys brought that up. Did it, did you take it as something flew out of the microwave? And oh her, yeah, or that she got beat for that doing she it? She got beat for doing it. That's how oh, I yeah. took it as the microwave did it. I uh, can't imagine the father. I took though. it as the, yeah. as the father mom. like fucking hit her. I took it as the mom. Well, okay, I took it as one of the parents beat <laughs> her for destroying. See how some everything's shit. open to interpretation in this movie because it seemed odd. <laughs> Is that it's weird? Like, she, because when the microphone or microphone, Jesus, when the microwave blows up, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Like she's just chilling there, yeah. And it blows up, and she's still just chilling there. Like, she doesn't react no. or anything at no, all. No, no. But yeah. then the next scene, she's got what well, looks like a broken nose. Looks and like she was a, a hockey eye. fight. Was she yeah. drinking a soda at the time? Because maybe the force blasted the can right into her nose what the and broke. Yeah. Eating this. pop rocks and drinking. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that and the no, no, I it's thought she. I thought she, all the young life claimed. <laughs> I thought she cracked a soda open and started yeah, drinking she, out of it right she before. She cracked a tab and then was yeah. like, "Fuck this!" <laughs> cracked the tab, yeah. got a, two black eyes. <laughs> so am I the only person that thinks that the, the microwave did it? You think the microwave I, did it? I don't think so. I, I, I don't she think doesn't so. really react, but maybe it's. Just I don't a bad, know. I, I took bad Samantha Mathis. She said something about like what the pearls came out like bullets or something like that, and I figured that she got like oh. blasted I thought in the that face was with a fucking pearl. Did that? No, no cause... I'm just saying that's what she said, and <laughs> well, I just thought it was no. Some that, kinda... That's that's what that's what Nora says. Yeah. but but she, the way she says it, I just think she's just like being big about it. Like, oh, she throws shit. In there. Pearls are flying left and right. It was catastrophe. Yeah, it is like, weird. And then yeah, she shows up with a. Broken nose. And Either that or her mother eye. was just like, you're going to get a nose job now. Yeah, <laughs> to make up for these pearls. Yeah. yeah, That feels like something out of high school, though. Like someone would just come to school and you'd be like, what happened? And you'd not know. Yeah. There'd yeah. be like four or five different stories of what happened to this person. Yeah. See, yeah. this movie, again, is just nailing high <laughs> See, school. The dad, nailing high school. When the, dad, when, when the girl's dad came in originally, he's like, oh, don't look tired for tomorrow. You have a meeting with Yale. So he seemed kind of like that nice that nice that fake nice dad that will beat you. No, see, I got yeah, the, I, got, I the, got that exact yeah. vibe from that mm-hmm. dad. I got the the that vibe from the mother. When did we ever see the mother? She comes in and says uh, like a couple lines, and she looks at her real cold, like I don't remember that. See, it's open to interpretation. <laughs> I think, I, maybe maybe that, there was if no mother. If that happened, no, or there not. was no mother. The only mother I remember coming in and doing that was the mother of the kid who committed suicide, and yeah. she said a few things. It was extremely cold. Was oh, like, maybe okay, it was fine. Just maybe stay I'm in getting my room. parents. She, I could yeah, be getting my mom, parents mixed that up. BT Dubs that, in yeah. that scene. Who didn't feel for that kid at that? I I felt I like did, I felt like right? that performance was really he solid. Yes, yeah, like I actually felt real. And isn't it crazy? 
he does all that without really giving a reason why. Right. That's a great performance. Wasn't he typing yeah, on his computer of, though? Like I mean, maybe. I assume he was typing in the the note that uh, Harry was recommending he do, but it's never he made. Was typing, it's, never but, made yeah. pr- it's never made apparent to no, the audience. No, it's not. No. It's not. And what's also interesting about that scene, though, is that, that Slater, right, um, Harry at that moment, right, has kind of doesn't know how to take it. So he had, at times, like for half of it, he is sort of like egging him on, slash, like half kidding, like not sure how to deal with this, and then it becomes apparent that the kids. Serious, about yeah. It. And that's mm-hmm. when he like completely changes up his tone. Yeah, and tries to you know. See, and I wanted in there. I wanted Harry to be like, nah, don't do it. But he doesn't. And then later on, says he should have said that it not to do it. Right after those girls make that prank phone call, mm-hmm. right? That like mm-hmm. one of them. That's why playing. I never listened to the show, and I just called the Deaver hotline. The Deave for help <laughs> <laughs> and talk about my feelings. Who had a hotline? Was that a nineties thing? Yeah. In yeah. School? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very. It was did a we very have? Nice. We didn't have. I didn't have a hotline. Well, I yeah. did. I mean, you I, had I, a I went hotline. Just, yeah, <laughs> hotlines were things. Well, yeah, there was definitely a teen suicide hotline. No, at your school. Yes. Really? I Absolutely. don't think I. Yeah. Did we well, I, I, I went to we high did. school during the '90s, yeah, so it's did. like that was like a big thing. Yeah. I don't suicide think was did. a huge thing. Those runaways. Yeah. Like there was a runaway hotline and yeah, yeah. All that stuff was. Did you? Big, we had a, right. It was the Soul we Asylum days, guys. <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> Runaway train. train. Everybody knows that song. <laughs> what do you think that was about? <laughs> you got to go back to the classics, Cody. <laughs> I just, you know, I was, I was. You like, didn't have yeah, suicide. Gotta, wasn't wasn't. You got to get yourself a when music was then. I, I was, guess, yeah. yeah. Of like, well, because I was, or, <laughs> I was in like grade, I was in grade school at the time. You know, I was watching Power Rangers and Beetleborgs, <laughs> so I was yeah. down <laughs> with you know. That's what happened. With the grunge music. Right. Yeah. With the grunge music, yeah. Yeah, everybody was really... I mean, there was... I hate to use the word there was a, a weird kind of glorification of death. You had Tupac dying, you had Kurt Cobain dying, you had a lot of people dying early on, young in their lives, and I think that specifically during the 90s... I mean, Heathers deals with that. It, it, yeah. it mocks it, the idea that, like, death is something cool, you know? yeah. And there was a lot of that prevo- that was going along during the nineties. So there were these hotlines, yes, that were trying to get kids to deal with this, so they understand that like, like this is not no, that this is not did, a good way to end. Did things. people call them? I mean, I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. I would, that, yeah, yeah I imagine. So I don't think anybody here has worked at a hotline. So <laughs> no, no, I, I, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just like, let me ask you this: when you, because you and Chris went to high school, I mean, was was like suicide like a thing? Yeah. I had one suicide when I was in high school. It was it? Uh, not me. Managed to escape that. Yeah. See, like when I went to high school, I just think I remember about four or five kids. Really? Yeah. Well, I had mm. one the whole time I was there in the four years. Yeah. And that's why. And I remember. I think they had like a hotline or something like it after it happened. But mm. before, I don't remember anything. I don't know. I never needed to use it. So. <laughs> I mean, like now I'm not knocking kids that did. I'm just no, saying, no, me, like, no, no, you wouldn't know either. it existed if you didn't need it. I mean, if you if you think you need to talk to somebody, you probably find out. You know. Yeah. I, no. It just. I don't know. Like it. I mean, I agree. Like there is this. There's definitely like this. Pr- there's the, the goth kid. I mean, goth is obviously prevalent in this movie. She's uh, yeah. Nora, she's kind of semi goth. Oh. She's pretty goth. Yeah, she's like semi goth. She's semi goth. So. Well, she's yeah. safe. Well, even he could be kind of. I mean, with I mean, you know, he's listening to punk music, but he's like, yeah. he's got his licorice blackjack gum and his right. Yeah, and he's like, I don't know, that sweet checkered shirt. Oh, yeah, I That's mean, right. they set that up though with like all the tape selections that he has in his room. You know, it's like Henry Rollins mm-hmm. and shit like that. Like Peter Murphy's yeah. on the soundtrack though, right at Baja. So yeah, it definitely has. Where was that? That represented. Where was my Nora in high school? I wanted a girl that would just whip her boobs out. <laughs> she is, a yeah. drop of a she hat. Has no problem with that. I feel like, that, I feel like huh? that's every boy in high school. Yeah, miss, I don't think that ever existed, <laughs> no, which is no, why no. it exists in movies because every guy <laughs> wanted that shit to happen. Right? Never yeah. happened. Yeah, like I feel like this movie does get the fantasy bits right. It's like yeah. that mm-hmm. you go from being a complete outsider to being the most popular kid and that you meet some girl <laughs> who whips out her boobs in about two seconds. Exactly. <laughs> Who's also <laughs> There was some build up there. Yeah, and then everything else is real about the film. Everything else feels like rooted in some sort of like true story. But at story the same time, or... would it be fantasy for for somebody with his fame? In high school, like, because he, no. he is a no, he's a famous person. People don't know who he is, but he is a famous person. And I feel like if girls did know who he was, yeah, yeah, he, girl, they girls, would be showing their. I, I mean, I get to some extent. Yeah, you're right. If they had known who he was, yeah, they probably right. would have. 
Well, but that wasn't his style. No, but not how he plays it. I feel like they build her. (laughs) They build her character up to the point where you see her passion for him and what he's doing, what he says. Well, obviously, and even even in that scene, like there's there's this overwhelming like lust, like for him. Are you fucking kidding me? That ending. When they get t- carted off in the van, she oh. just gives him a look like, I am going to fuck you in this van. Like, I don't care who is <laughs> this looking. Patty <laughs> no, she is. Like, like yeah. her whole thing. And yeah. this, towards the end, she just, like. I believed it, though. The, her I, hormones go out of control. That's the thing, was when she did pull her shirt off, like, during that scene, <laughs> it felt very real. Like, it mm-hmm. felt like this, like. I like it didn't seem corny or like oh, too real? too no God, yeah, it, it was, was so it. set up like yeah. we're gonna have <laughs> Christian Slater take off his shirt in this scene right before he walks <laughs> out she and she's standing off. right outside <laughs> after she left an hour ago for him to finish his show. She played it off. Right. She played it well. I was all. But I'm isn't saying. it like he's like talking to her but not at her? Right? Yeah, like, he's looking yes. away. That part feels somewhat. It's very that Beauty feels, and the Beast. It, yeah, and she and she feel. leaves for for you you. She doesn't I, leave. She just goes outside and listens to the yeah. whole. Yeah, no, 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 no. She she's all about to have sex with him. Yes, and yes. then he says, "Yeah, I can talk when I when I want to," and then she's like, "Well, maybe we should call this off." And I'm having a hard time actually. You 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 have a theory about it, but I have a hard time figuring out why she stops. I thought at that moment that she maybe didn't trust him because she thought she was getting to know him, and but he still told her like. Like basically, he couldn't talk like to it like a normal person. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, she pulls it out of him, and she's like, "What? Like you said you couldn't?" He said, "You know, but you can." And he said, "Yes, I can." And then she gets kind of like turned off by that. But yeah. she's all about it the next morning. Like, he yeah, shows that up. is weird. That is strange. Like, she's waiting for him. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a question for you, though: Can he talk? Can he talk? Yeah, can he? Because yeah. obviously, when he's at school, is it, is it really that much of a choice that he's he's purposely trying to be that much of a fly on the I wall and not so. be noticed? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I that, that's so. act. He's actively making that choice. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought it was an act, like for him, like he was just getting through the day and didn't want. He even says later in the like the end of the theme or like the almost the motto right is that like um, he's like high school sucks. Surviving it is the point, right? Yeah. So he is just trying to survive high school. He doesn't want to make friends. This is not like where he's going to pull his best memories of life or anything like that. No prom king for for uh, Mark here. Uh, but I think he's he's actively just trying to like keep his head down, keep out of trouble, you know. And that's why he doesn't really know how to even react when things actually do start to build up and it gets kind of out of hand. And he is sort of a celebrity. Like he doesn't want that. He doesn't know how to handle it at all. Okay, then but I. Then, did, but then why does he keep going back? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, go on. Sorry to interrupt. But why does he keep on going back then? Because obviously he does. He he's a, a taste of it and he wants it. No, he's no. a man with convictions. Mm, I don't. I think no. that's different. Mm. I think he feels like he has to do something to right what happens with he, Mister Serious. He, yes, I feel like he. Uh, it's, I feel like he gets a. a he's. I don't feel like he. He gets a taste. He's like, oh, I'm popular now. This yeah, is great. No, no I never yeah, got no, that. I don't, from I don't character buy that. Yeah, I don't think no, that ever. No, happens. no, I don't think. Th- I don't think that either. I don't think he thinks it's great. But I think that there's a want for that attention that he's getting. I never got that. Because- I think. I think it's. I honestly, I think it's steeped in the whole him saying that he can't talk because or connect with people because. Isn't the very end where he's looking over the students and he finally speaks out to all of them as himself in his real voice and says, talk hard, and then everybody goes up for us. Like, isn't that the moment that's the thing that, like, like that he's conquered his fears in a way? Like, if there's anything about him conquering and finally getting over his issues, it's got to be that that's. That that no, even the I think it happens that, right? before that. Even the whole buildup when he finally yeah. does, goes on without the voice modulator. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this is the real me. Yeah, like, yeah. Kinda, but this is the first time he's saying he's not saying it through a microphone though. Yeah. He's no, he it too there. No, he is. Ta- well, he. Oh, you're saying. Oh, I'm okay. saying he's, he's finally, without the microphone. He's, he has nothing. There's no microphone. There's no persona. It's him being carted off in a van, and he has to shout it out to. The I entire student body, but he's into that. Yeah. but he's pushed in that by uh, what old old sourpuss, the FCC guy. That's no, like, he's pushed. <laughs> this is what happens when yeah. he's pushed. In, he's pushed. Of he's pu- no, he wanted to, like he <laughs> he wanted to give up and stop like three different times, but he's pushed each time by freaking Nora to keep doing it. So so I mean, is there? 
Is he pushed the first time? He's not pushed the first time. Yeah, the first time, the first the first time, time he wants suicide. to quit is because of the suicide. Yeah, and, that's and, true. And honestly, the rest like, of the, like the rest right, of the rightfully so, he keeps going because I feel like if you were to quit at that point, you're almost doing a disservice to this person. Yeah, that, like, yeah. But once the kids start blowing up their microwaves, getting beat, he was yeah. more. He was more so wanting to quit because he. It seemed like anytime he wanted to quit, it was triggered by like by want? by vandal. No, by vandalism that was happening at the school, and he thought, "Oh, I can't be responsible for this." It was a really weird yeah. character character switch, but. Honestly, like the the character of Nora, I don't really think she figured out who he was until like the last one of the last times he wanted to quit. There was a point where he wanted to to quit, and then he realized like, okay, well, I I mean, this means this means something more than to just me. He's doing it. He's being pushed by other other people and other things to drive it. So would that not be necessarily like the want of that? No, I think it's what you said. It's like he's trying to wrong. He's trying to right the wrong. And he keeps, he almost keeps like failing at it, but then comes back a little uh, stronger. Other and, people keep on bringing that up to him. Like, you can't stop because you've pushed it this far. You've already brought right. it this far. You can't stop. You, it's other people telling him. But sometimes you stop. need to hear it from somebody well, else to realize it. Like, sure. so many times people need to tell you. And in that final act, it becomes much larger than just this show, right? He's representing like rebelling yeah. against mm-hmm. and, and like the, the right. I mean, we were like completely uh, forgetting about the whole storyline, which comes really strong in that last act. About like the right to education, and there were that the school is um, fraudulent, that they're like fixing SAT scores uh, and kicking out students for no good reason because they don't do well, and all of that stuff that's going on that he is sort of mm-hmm. partly exposing in that final bit there. That is kind of I think what drives that last I think so run too. of stuff more than he, more than maybe Nora. Is, yeah, because he finds out Nora gets kicked out right. for some stupid reason, and he finds out the teacher. He didn't do gets it all fired. for the nookie. It just some, <laughs> some, <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> I have a question. Oh, sure. um, was the modulated voice William Shatner's voice? No. Well, oh, I wondered if it was um, uh, puts the lotion in the basket. Right. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> that's his name. Oh, Shao Kahn. Yeah. yeah. Shao Kahn. <laughs> has anybody looked up who does the voice for that or no. what that voice is? I, I just assumed it was his modulated. voice being yeah. modulated. Right. Yeah. Right. You really? You think yeah, so? You, yeah. think, you think it might be a different actor? You think, no, I don't. I think it was just they put his voice through okay. a fucking. Voice. Well, we'll so, look it up. Why did you think it was William Shatner? Sound like William Shatner. If really? Why else would I think that? that? And that explains why Christian Slater was in Star Trek What Five. <laughs> they became friends, and he's just like, hey, you want to come on a No, they would just say, hey, set? we need a modulated this, voice, but we need more inflection in it. We can't get that through a modulator, so we right. need an actual actor who has a voice that sounds like that, I... which sounds kind of like William Shatner's voice. <laughs> so I'm curious. Okay, so film has no legacy, what to speak of, right? It opened up, I think, what did, what did I look up? Like, it opened up... Uh, 11 mil, right? 15th. The, it was number 15 in the box office oh, its opening weekend good for it. in August 24th, 1990. It was right behind Problem Child, <laughs> which was in its fifth week. Great film. Wow. <laughs> oh, my fifth God. Week. <laughs> Still. Okay, so Problem hit. Child in its fifth week. Well, that's a better, hit. That's a hit movie. better than this. <laughs> that's a hit so movie. So that's like this movie just bombed and is a blip, I think. And that's mm. probably why it has like it was tough to find and everything. But now, yeah. now, right, like. I mean, it kind of, it's like there's YouTube stars. There's a lot of, like, you were doing a podcast. There's right. a lot of this kind of thing out there. I wonder if it would, like, find a new audience at some point. With I don't know, because here's the thing. Yeah, I this had, movie. I had this very conversation with Kyle after we saw this. And after I saw this film, there was a, there was a sort of sadness that I felt, like a depression, that there is, that who, how can you be rebellious anymore in media anymore? Right. Everything exists out there. Like I could, I could do a podcast and say whatever I want to. No one's going to shut me down because the the internet has inundated us with virtually every type of voice that we can possibly imagine. So there was a sadness of there was there. There'll never be that guy that like will pirate radio. Yeah. is no longer. Dude, yeah, I was going to say nobody else to radio. This was like oh. social media back then. It was like somebody getting out and saying what they wanted to, and all these people reacting to it. You know, essentially, but. You so you, are you asking if it's a product of its time? Or no, I'm just it, wondering, yeah. like, I think it's just interesting if, if you think it would actually find an audience. Like, Does it deserve there, a bigger audience now? Yeah, maybe, like a revisit, of... right? Because like, mm-hmm. I think it actually does hold I think up. So. I, you know what I feel about this film, too? Go ahead. I think the, the, import, the, the thing that made me kind of remember what it was like being in high school is being passionate, that passionate about anything anymore. That passionate about music. That passionate about... Poetry for fucking Christ's sake, Emerson. The guy's been dead for like, you know, like, <laughs> and they're true. talking about like it's the first time they've ever read it. You don't get that 
impassioned. Like uh, the part that kind of made me eye roll, but then also it's like, you know what? Nah, I did that when I was 15 too, was when she's listening, when, when Nora's listening to him on the radio and she's responding to him yeah. in her voice. And I understand it's probably like a movie thing, but it was also something that I probably would have done mm-hmm. yeah. a, as a kid, like speak back to mm-hmm. a, a DJ on the radio mm-hmm. or speak back just because I'm so impassionate about it. Mm-hmm. And I, I know feel like this film does that, that really yeah. well. I think that's the the main thing. It was that that's what he was trying to do was get these kids impassioned about it and right. about take control question. of their lives. Sorry, Mike. Sorry. Do you think that this film inspired Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist at all? <sighs> really? You yeah, think Nick and Nora's? Yeah, because well, Nora, and also because it's all about <laughs> this DJ. Of the name. Because it's about this DJ who plays this music that's you know like. Isn't that what happens in Nick and Nora? Like yeah. basically, yeah, he's like popular some... for these playlists that he made. Yeah, and they're, yeah. Are they trying to find him. Like they're on a like they, it's kind of like a road trip kind of thing, right? Yeah, I thought it was. Or they're right? at least like traveling, like an adventures of babysitting kind of thing. Like they're going. <laughs> what? I'm gonna say no. I I, I think I do a hard no I, I on that one. I think it, no. I haven't I don't seen think it could in be a while. hard no though. I don't think it could be a hard no. It could be a soft no. I'd have to see it again. <laughs> I'd have to see it again, and I'd have to relate it to this film because it's been a while since I've seen that film, but. Do you think this film did inspire it's, anything? It's a half like, chub no. Okay. I'd had to. I have. feel like this film was inspired by things. I feel like it probably did end up it ended up inspiring other films in certain ways. Yeah. This so. I guess this gets back to like what I said earlier, where it's like some people around that I asked that I like that do stuff in the valley, uh, that actually try to go out there and, and, and maybe make a difference or something, seem to like know this film. And I do think so I think people who saw this film and myself include this is why I picked it right was this film meant a lot to me because this is what I this is probably of any character in a film I probably wanted to be Mark or do something like this mm-hmm. more than anything I saw when I was young it's because at times the Arizona scene can suck absolutely that's true when imagine in like I think I saw this probably in 93 okay so 1993 grown up in Phoenix not like a cool place to say no. you're from, and not a cool place to be, or anything like that. And We're so slowly was, turning the, the point fact now. That there was even a movie that like took place here that had something cool in it was a big deal mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, let alone the fact that I think I responded so much because I knew what it was like to be a place where like it is possible that one person would stand out for doing this at a high school. Like that seemed very realistic to me because there there was like a group of like three people that were in a band and that band was very popular in high school and everyone knew those three guys that right, were in right. that band. Um, yeah. So it seemed very possible that like you could do something like this mm-hmm. and go from, it uh, seemed achievable. Like, right. and, you, and then you went back home after you saw this movie and you tried to build yourself a, a, a little right. broadcasting <laughs> station in your room. Right. That's how I lost my that's left, a, I mean, left that's testicle. How I, I used right? to get inspired by a shit <laughs> like this, you know, <laughs> let's write this. What are we writing it? Uh, we're uh, whale sperm. Right. Cool. Kyle? Uh, is it just going to be splurts of sperm? <laughs> Whatever. You go vial Keep, that says yeah. whale on it. Get creative. You come up God. with it. You're the creative <laughs> genius. You know I have like this much space to work in. Hey, figure it out. Kyle. Well, it depends <laughs> on what the ratings are. You'll you'll find out how much space you have to work with. <laughs> Kyle, how much whale sperm are you going to give this movie? Oh, I'm going to give this movie four just whale sperm by itself? Is it vials of whale sperm? Oh, yeah. whale sperm by itself. Yeah. Four whale sperms. Four splats of whale Four sperm. sperm. <laughs> splats right sperm. there. <laughs> Four splats of whale sperm. Um, I love this movie. I Like I said on the podcast already, this movie, I think, has a very honest message. Um, I think it has a very honest viewpoint at um, going to high school. And I think it is one of Christian Slater's best. And, and I, yeah. I don't know. I don't have much to say about it. I went. I went emotions on this one, and I feel like what I said during the podcast was good. All right. So, for whale sperm from me, okay. they'll let us know, Kyle. <laughs> they will. There's nothing I can talk about technically. Like, oh, those Dutch angles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was shot. It was not a single shot one. Two, actually, it was shot in two yeah, places. It wouldn't have been appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing fancy about. Yeah. 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 The By the books, here. filmmaking. But great story. I'll go next. Uh, I'm gonna give it three, three whale sperms. That's more than I thought you'd give it. Uh, really. I didn't hate it. Why does everybody think I hate this movie? <laughs> it's the tone yeah. you use. You sound like you hate it. everything. I know. Well, you know. <laughs> That's just being old. <laughs> it's, you get used yeah, to it. Exactly. No, I don't hate this movie at all. Um, I think it is honestly one of Christian Slater's better movies that I've seen. You know, it's no broken arrow, but what is? <laughs> yeah. Um no, <laughs> no, it is. It's it's an inspiring film about um changing your immediate world that you're surrounded in. I think that's a pretty powerful message and it has a good 
good way of uh, describing that in a realistic way where it's like, yeah, it also sucks doing it. You know what I mean? You're going to go through some shit when you want to change it, and it's not all fucking smiley, smiles and lollipops. It's not. You know, and this movie touches on that. Yeah, there's some good moments, but you're mostly going to go through shit to make a difference, but it's going to be worth it at the end to make that difference. Um, I think this movie leaves a lot of that open for your own interpretation. You may not get that same thing that I got from it. So, um, I, you know, I give it a three right now, but that's barring another watching and this is my first time seeing it. So maybe I'll pick up something different the next time I watch it. Michael, I'm going to give this four whale sperms. I love this film. It was a fantastic film. And it, it did remind me of kind of being in high school probably because I grew up. This is when I went to high school, but <laughs> like, <laughs> you went to this high school. <laughs> I went to this very high school. No, um, no, it's a fantastic film. I love the message. I love the. I mean, the acting is good too. It's, you know, I mean, what what can I say bad about it? I mean, it, it kind of trods along a little bit in the middle. That's about all I can say bad about it. Mm-hmm. But other than that, yeah, writing's great. Story's great. Not a five, though, huh? Not a five. Not a five. Oh. Not a five. Well, you know, look, nothing bad about it. Look, but it's not a five. It's a good film, you know. But <laughs> just giving you oh, shit. Just Citizen sorry. Kane. <laughs> Give your give, give yeah. your give your rating away, Chris. It is Christian Slater, Citizen Kane. <laughs> yeah, it's Christian Slater, Citizen Kane. Good one. Next up is Chris. Chris, how many five whale sperms are you? I'm not, give gonna, it? I'm not giving it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving it five whale splat sperm sper, splat sperms. Sperm splat. S- sperm slat splats. Okay. Um, I, I I do think this is one of my favorite roles that I've seen Christian Slater in. Although I don't think a lot of his other movies are bad, you know, I, I do enjoy him as an actor. But um, but yeah, I really like this. I thought hit, him as an actor really his performance was really good. And I want to go back and watch it again because I feel like there's a lot um of dialogue that I might have missed and a lot of things that he says that really drives home all of the points that yeah. are, that this film is trying to make. Um, so it's deeper, and, and I think it's a film that you can watch a few times and, and pick up more and more and more as you go along. I thought all the, the supporting cast like was really good and entertaining and interesting. Um, I do like high school movies, especially ones in the 80s, early 90s. I think they're like really entertaining to watch. Um, and I like the serious tone of this one, you know, it did it, and the energy and like just... I don't know. I didn't feel like it dragged. I, I the pacing was was right on for me. I was interested the whole time, um, and uh, I'm I'm actually surprised that you know I, I, he went on to Alan Moyle went on to do Empire Records, but I, I didn't see a whole ton of stuff that he went on to do, and I find that kind of odd because I feel like he really did have like a vision and a voice for what he wanted to say because he wrote this too, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and the writing, like I said, I think the writing is fantastic. So I'm gonna give this a four and a half uh, uh, sperm splats. I I really like this movie and I definitely want to watch it again, Matt. I, straight, uh, even though I picked this, I think I'm going to come a little under um, Chris. I'm going to go with four um, whale sperm. And largely, the only reason that I would hold it back is because I don't think the film, and we we did talk, well, we, our absence of talking about anything technical about this film is kind of the factor that, like, it does feel shot, like, for TV almost. Or maybe that's just because now TV looks like film, yeah. but that's the way that that feels. But um, but it's not particularly dynamic in the way it's shot and and or or even edited or even the style of anything about it is not particularly, there's nothing cinematic um, or, or anything about it, which I think my favorite films that would get anything five out of five would have that, yeah, in it, yeah. that quality to them. Um, that being said though, I, I, yeah, the surprising thing is, is seeing this and I, I've, I think the last time I watched it was six years ago or something like that, but it feels even more like where it, it held up. Like there's some evergreen stuff in this film that will forever make it, I think, a favorite of mine, a film that I hold very dear to me. The stuff that it deals with high school and how it deals with that that stuff, um, because it feels so uh, unfiltered in a way, it feels so not created in a table around with a bunch of writers or someone trying to concoct what they remember. It feels like it's taken from true stories. I think those kinds of things just make it a film that's going to last for a long time. And uh, I've got a stepson who's about to enter high school, and I'm wondering, like, what are films that would be like good to pass along in that requiem in that for instant, a dream in that instance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, hor- the horrors of drugs yeah. taken check. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it follows. So he never has sex. Right. Yeah. Check. And then, um, <laughs> and then this film. So he has some hope about, yeah. you know, like do your own thing, be your own person. Like life gets better. But yeah. So I'm, I think that, that that's the reasons why, um, 
why it sits where it does with four. Nice. Four. All right, guys, that's our show for the week. You can uh, follow the show on social media at ColtFilm underscore review on Instagram. You can also follow that on Twitter. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow Mike at, at Mike Salucio on Twitter. You can find me writing about film at FriendlyNeighborhoodFilmmaking.com and other places. You can follow Kyle at... You can follow me on uh, ColtFilm underscore Kyle on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow Chris at... Uh, you can follow me at ColdFilm underscore Chris, or you can go to MidnightReleasing.com and check out some independent horror, sci-fi, dark comedy films coming out in the near future. And you can one movie, by the way. Uh, one All movie. those genres. Yeah. That's, That's the way one. it's going, oh, guys. Cross <laughs> genre. <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram at ColdFilm uh, underscore review, basically, because I'm never on my. I'm never yeah. on mine anymore, dude. I'm just on that one, basically. And then you can follow Matt. Uh, darkofthematinee.com and dark underscore matinee on Twitter. All right, guys, that's our show for this week. Just remember, if you're going to join a cult, make sure they watch good movies.